to present the 2020 Upper Midwest Emmy Chapter Board of Governors Emmy Award, please welcome South Dakota Regional Vice President Kevin King from KSFY TV. Good evening from downtown Sioux Falls, everyone. I'm here at the Ark of Dreams on the banks of the Big Sioux River. There's one award tonight which holds the highest honor among our peers. It's the Governor's Emmy Award. It's the only regional Emmy Award voted on and approved by our Board of Governors. These professionals represent every state in our region, virtually every broadcast market and media platform. The climate of our country, our states, all the way down to our neighborhood is more polarizing than ever. Tonight, we honor an organization that's finding ways to help its community connect and break through differences that prevent people from sitting down and discussing differences at the table. The Breaking Bread, Building Bridges project was developed by the Des Moines Civil and Human Rights Commission. They teamed up with the local company Digital Matters to capture what happens when people take the time to talk with one another despite their differences over one commonality we all share, the need to eat. So let me officially say, welcome to Breaking Bread, Building Bridges. This is an ambitious project by the Des Moines Civil and Human Rights Department where we want to really see what happens when people just actually really converse with one another, despite their differences and see what happens. Now our office, we are the Civil Rights Enforcement Agency for the City of Des Moines. And it's our mission to uh, eliminate and prevent discrimination here in the city. But we also have a bigger mission. Our mission is to foster mutual understanding and respect amongst all persons that work, live, or visit the City of Des Moines. All right, well the process was a five-part process. And uh, part one was you are first matched up with your partner at a public dinner at a public restaurant. While you're still sitting here before dinner gets in, and I want you to figure out how many things on your paper do you actually have in common? Just go ahead and tally them all up. How many things do you have in common? And I think most of those groups are very surprised at how many things that they actually had in common. And then we had a few icebreaker questions as well. Um, Beyond that, we then did a dialogue, and it was a dialogue focused on race. But we took a different twist. We actually focused on how race impacts white people. And they had to interact and converse based upon that and, and how the demographics are changing and how do we address these changing demographics because race is the most difficult subject for us to tackle in America. It makes people uncomfortable, it makes people combative, although the conditions which cause us to be uncomfortable and combative, we personally didn't create. Um, once persons were able to interact with their person, only then did we ask them to go into part three and four, which is go into one another's homes. Uh, and there, we didn't have any control. We said, hey, we want you to have a casual dinner, how you normally have dinner. Uh, that could be cold pizza. Uh, that could be an extravagant meal with family members. It didn't matter. And um, it, it looks like those dinners were uh, very engaging for some people, um, letting people into their home that they did not know until they started this project. Uh, Montserrat Iniguez and uh, Judge Colin Witt were a very interesting matchup. Actually watching that relationship evolve through the process I thought was very interesting. Montserrat had told me at the group session in November that uh, she did not celebrate Christmas and I invited her to my home and I knew what my home would look like. It would be as though Christmas vomited upon our home. But his house was definitely decked out in Christmas scared, Christmas decorations. Um, and so again, you know, he, he's very much a family oriented individual, very much a family man, and, and I respect that. It's not at all where I come from. What I challenge my students on is, if we are serious about changing our culture and our society, we've got to get to deeper levels of relationship that are not comfortable. And that's, this project forced me to 
put some action steps toward some mm -hmm. of those types of relationships. I think as I get older and I have a 13 year old, that's a big thing going on in my house that I just don't understand. And so I think it, it's, it's really relevant to what's going on right now. And to assume that you know everything about everything is ridiculous. And so I think it's time to stop you know, moaning and complaining and actually start having a conversation. I think anytime we're given the opportunity to hear someone else's story, I'm going to take it. And especially when there are divides or chasms between people and there's an opportunity to kind of bridge those gaps, I just, it's something I really want to be a part of. Something positive, anything that's under the positive aspect or category, yeah, anything about making change or being part of change. One of the things I like to say is most people have evolutions, not epiphanies. So I don't know if this project is going to be life-changing, but I think it's going to add to their lives. Uh, because if you go through this project and you recognize, okay, wow, I was just matched up with someone who is a pastor and I'm, and I'm gay. And you know, technically we have different lifestyles, but you know, we were able to sit, we were able to talk, we were able to understand one another. That adds to your evolution as a person. And I'm, I just want to help humanity evolve and evolve into togetherness. And I think this project will really help people uh, not necessarily have that light bulb moment, but at least grow as human beings to help us see that we're all more, we have more in common than we think despite our differences. It's my honor to welcome and present this year's Governor's Award to the Des Moines Civil and Human Rights Commission Director Joshua V. Barr. Hello, my name is Joshua V. Barr, and I am the director of the Des Moines Civil and Human Rights Department here in the city of Des Moines. We want to thank the Academy for allowing us to win this Governor's Emmy uh, in regards to the documentary Breaking Bread, Building Bridges. When we conceived of this project, we didn't do it for the Emmy. Uh, we did it because we wanted to really show that people could come together despite their differences and come together and find some commonality. But we thank you for acknowledging the work that we did behind this work. Uh, but this project, although I may have had the original vision behind it, it wouldn't have been possible without a few persons and I have to thank those people. Uh, first of all, to my original team that really helped the logistics of bringing this project into light, Montserrat Anigas, Eric Scott, Emily Cohen. I wanna thank you for working with me on this project from beginning to end and it paid off, we did it. I also wanna thank Shekinah Young, who when I approached her about doing this project, uh, she was really creative with how we could get it done. And she ultimately introduced me to uh, Chris DeBolt in Digital Matters, who ultimately produced the film. Uh, Chris, I know I really got on your nerves with some of the editing that we wanted done, but hey, it paid off. I also wanna say thank you to David DeRong, who in the midst of that editing was giving us a lot of cues and pointers about B-rolls, things I had no clue about. And thank you, David, because without you, it would not have been the final project uh, that it would have been. Uh, so thank you to all those persons for really bringing that project into fruition, including my current team, uh, Kenzie Coppock, Matthew Hogue, Manisha Padel, uh, and others who really helped us move it out of the editing into the marketing and, and getting it and promoting the film. So thank you to you all as well. Uh, special thank you to Matthew Hogue. Thank you for making me believe in people again. Uh, in this, uh, again, there are some other people that I have to thank as well. I also have to thank the participants who participated in this project uh, from the people, uh, 100 or so people that we interviewed to see who we're gonna match them up with down to the 40 or so people that we ultimately selected. Uh, we did not do this for this award again, but your participation made this project possible. But in addition to the award, and much bigger than award, I hope that you have grown as people in the time that you uh, have participated in this project, as well as I hope that you're still connecting with your partner in this event. A special thank you to Colin Witt, uh, who participated in this project, but is no longer here with us. Uh, your spirit still lives on, uh, your memory still lives on, and I hope your children have the opportunity to watch this film and understand the great person that I know you are uh, and, and something that they can hold on to uh, for years to come. We also want to thank the persons who allowed us to shoot in their facilities. I want to say thank you to Drake University and Aaron Lane. Thank you for allowing us to uh, shoot it in the law school, so thanks, special thanks to Drake Law as well. 
We also want to thank Gusto's Pizza, my opinion, the best vegan pizza here in Des Moines. Uh, we want to thank Kathmandu Restaurant, one of the best restaurants, period, here in Des Moines. Thank you for allowing us to do it, as well as Barada's Italian Restaurant on the south side of Des Moines. So in addition to those persons, I want to thank a few people who gave me the vision to really bring this project into reality. Uh, number one, I want to thank my grandfather, Joseph V. Barr, again, no longer here with me but you still live on in spirit. Uh, thank you for teaching me that I can succeed against all odds. Also wanna thank my grandmothers just for your good cooking and I understood how no matter how, what kind of heated discussion you had that day with your cousins and, and siblings, food could always make you shut your mouth and just enjoy the moment. So thank you to my grandmothers for that. Also wanna thank my nephew BJ Barr uh, you're no longer here with me, BJ, but I promise you, since you passed on November 11, 2013, uh, your spirit lives in me every day. I no longer just live for myself. I live to make you proud. I live for two people. And thank you, although you are young in age, you taught me that you have to just live, live in the moment and really give it all you got. And you did that, and that's something I'll always uh, carry with me. But ultimately, we want to say and we want to thank the people who uh, have watched this film and the people who will watch it. Ultimately, when we made this film, we made it for you all. And we made it so that people could come together and see what happens when people come together despite their differences. Because we believe that people are bigger than their differences. So we hope that you take the time to look at this film and look at how we brought people together and how they came together despite not even knowing one another at first and really grew a bond and understood that they were bigger than their differences. And to organizations and persons out there who feel like they're full of ambition and have a big vision, but no one seems to understand. I want you to understand something. When we originally shot this video, it was just an idea with no budget. We went for it. Uh, there were people who didn't believe, people who didn't understand, but now we're here. And so I say that as a lesson there may be people and there may be persons and departments that may try to sideline you and put you to the side. But understand, vision aligned with talent, skill and passion can never be sidelined forever and cannot be silenced for long. So go for it. Spread your wings, take the risk necessary and fly, because I promise you, you're bigger than what someone else thinks about you. You're bigger than your neighborhood. You're bigger than your city. Let your talents and your passion soar. And I promise you, when you take the risk, you will see the results. At the end of the day, again, we thank the Academy for allowing us to receive this award. We're very humbled. We're very honored. And at the end of the day, we want people to understand we're bigger than our differences. And these polarizing times, this is the time to come together and understand that the rhetoric that we're hearing, we're much bigger than that. We're more than that. So I implore you to get to know your neighbors, but also in addition to get to know your neighbors, work to change the things in your community. They won't happen with you sitting on the sideline. Get involved and remember the power is yours. Use it appropriately, use it so that all persons can have the opportunity to be everything they can be and that everyone in the community can flourish. Thank you again.